this thing was way more popular than we expected. This is the Intel Nook, the Hades Canyon unit, which AMD and Intel worked together on creating, and we liked it a lot. Honestly, it's one of the most fun pieces of hardware I've reviewed lately, just because it's kind of different. It's cool to see something from two opposing companies that's actually really good. So what we're going to do today is try and realize the full power of overclocking, because when we overclocked it for the review, it pushed pretty far, but we kept running into thermal constraints, and at the time, we were pretty confident that it could go even further still if it didn't have that thermal limitation. We could just put a fan on it, honestly, and that'd be fine, but uh, we're gonna go with liquid cooling instead, hopefully, so we'll see how this goes. Before that, this is brought to you by the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X and NVIDIA's GeForce Experience, which allows you to retroactively capture key gameplay moments with shadow play, convert captures into GIFs with new tools, and apply filters to games, hashtag no filter. MSI's Gaming X PCBs are high quality with well-built power management and coolers that we've previously recommended. Learn more at the links in the description below. This thing's not too hard to open, so we gotta open it up, and it's gonna be a two-part video. Part one is going to be this one, where we try and I try and figure out how to liquid cool it. Part two is going to be the results and the actual data for testing with liquid cooling. We have thermals before, we'll have thermals after, we'll have overclocking numbers after, all that stuff. Should be a lot of fun, actually. Uh, also, Buildzoid did a PCB and VRM semi-pseudo-analysis on this box. If you're curious about the actual the VRM setup, go watch that. So, a couple things here. This doesn't have mounting holes for liquid cooling. Shocking, I know. Uh, we can't also <laughs> drill holes into the PCB to create that scenario. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. It's probably going to involve zip ties, and I don't know, I have these parts, uh, which we might reveal a little later, from AliExpress. Our, our uh, friends over in China shipped them, took about five weeks to get here, and it's basically laptop liquid cooling parts, and we're gonna try and put them on this. First thing I need to do is open it up. So uh, this is, I'm going to be using the new iFixit kit, they are going to be an advertiser soon. You'll see a couple ads on our channel for them. They're not immediately this second, but uh, this is a Manta kit. I've not used it before, so it's gonna take me a minute to find everything. But this is their new iFixit Manta kit that they are, I think, sending out to market soon. Allen Key, where are you? So here's the inside. There's the uh, Intel Skull logo, old Skull Trail logo. Here's where the LED magic happens, if you were curious. Pretty simple and straightforward, really. All right, so now I need to pull screw here, here, and I think maybe that one. And this thing just kind of lifts up on its own at that point. Manticut does have Phillips heads. So there's that. What is this? Are we going to need this? That's for the LED. Okay, so we won't need that. Here's our memory. What we need to do is remove the whole thing. This is actually kind of a pain, this process. They don't really intend for you to do it. So it's one screw in each corner. All right, important note here. If you can, always try and get your fingernails around the lip of these connectors, because I, I have done this before. If you pull at the wires, eventually you'll rip one of the small wires out of the the header and you'll have to re-solder it and that kind of sucks. So uh, these are for the fans, I, I believe, which will review, reveal momentarily two blower fans on the underside. All right, so next step is push down. <laughs> Mine's a bit easier because I've opened it before. I'm gonna tap our ground point from the GN anti-static mod mat. I'll go ahead and plug that. That's our product. You go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up the work surface that I'm working on right now. It's super rubberized and grippy, and it's anti-static, which we like. Made in a, a factory that makes products for clean rooms, actually. All right, so next part. This part is really annoying. You're getting a teardown here of, of the nook in addition to the liquid cooling stuff we never did a teardown of the Nook. So I talked to people at Intel to confirm this, and the best way to get this board out of here is to kind of 
slightly bend the metal uh, for the I.O., which doesn't feel like a great thing to do, but it is the best way I could find because it's got little hooks on top of it that hook onto the I.O., and you can't, you can't lift it up at the back and just like angle it out because uh, the blower fans will get hit. Is there a screw I'm missing? Yes. All right. Most of the hard part is done. So there's our blower fans. These are the things that were working so hard to cool. They're pushed up against this aluminum heat sink. It's a very efficient system for the size. Uh, they, they're loud, they get up to over 50 decibels when you have them at 100%, basically unusable at that point. And that means you're kind of limited thermally on overclocking at some, uh, eventually you get limited. Now, uh, it is a full vapor chamber cooler. So Intel's done a lot with the space they have, especially because they're cooling uh, function, well, what's called the Vega part and an Intel part under the same heat sink. This is, this is my doing. I, don't worry about that. It's, I put on much better thermal paste. All right, so vapor chamber setup as noted. Uh, we're going to clean all this off, or I guess on this one. That's the vapor chamber, and it's got heat sinks for the VRM, so we'll have to figure that out. Honestly, we could just use air. A lot of airflow on the VRM components would be sufficient. So I need to figure out what I can put here for a liquid cooler, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, what can I put there? Uh, what I need to know is one axis, 51. That's very close to Polaris. We might be able to just put uh, unbranded sketchy heatsink on it. Uh, so I apologize for my previous stance on hating on boxings. I, I actually think this is a really valuable one we can do right here. What are these and what can we do with them? There's our heat pipe. This is going to be awful. That is an option. I'm going to need to, I'll put like those crappy fin stacks on top of here too with a big fan because otherwise I'm not convinced this is really conducting any heat. Uh, is there a better thing we can do? That uh, does not cover everything. Let me check one more thing. That will cover everything. How do I hold it down? Before putting thermal paste on it, I'm just going to try this idea. I'm going to mount this thing and then run zip ties across it. And for the VRM components, we'll just use, um, what will we, we'll just use air for those. All right, this is our proof of concept. I'm gonna have to run a couple of these. It kind of secures it, but clearly this is far too loose. So I'm hoping if I apply force this way as well, it will get it to stabilize on top of the silicon components. But we're gonna need to actually cut this so that I can <clears throat> uh, grab the um, the thermal paste. I'm using this stuff specifically because it's not liquidy, so I know when I put it on there, it's going to stay, which is important because this cooler is going to be moving all over the place as I'm mounting it. It's also why I'm going to put extra paste on there. HBM, that's the HBM over there. It's really low heat flux, so we don't really need to worry about HBM overheating at all. Uh, we could honestly just cool it with a lot of air. But 
I'm gonna just coat this with paste to make sure there's for sure contact. Question is, is it even making contact? <laughs> I think so. Pretty sure. I think it's in the right places. Okay, so I think this is what we're gonna go with for right now. This is a patent pending design. So be quiet if you're looking for a new mounting mechanism for your coolers because you need one. Uh, don't steal this idea. But basically, it's a weave. So we've got a weave of zip ties going in and out of each other, applying opposing pressure on the tubes to keep the thing kind of centered. It wobbles still but I'm hoping there's enough downward force to do what I want. And if there's not, then I have other coolers I can use. I could probably drill holes through stuff and get them to align with the uh, through holes on here. But let me show you the backside. This is our the best part of our creation. So in putting this together, kind of realized like, oh, wait a minute. I forgot to put the uh, SSD back in, but fortunately we can just do that and it doesn't need to be screwed down because if I apply more force uh, it, it will not act like a seesaw it will probably just pivot on the fulcrum there and crack so we're gonna do that for the SSD and then there's the uh, mounting mechanism there's the liquid cooler it's a be quiet 280 millimeter silent loop that we used previously for the uh, the Vega mod I'm just using it because it had the most versatile mounting kit and then we didn't use it. And I'll probably just put some maglevs on here. So my biggest, fortunately we have, because this is Vega, we have an HBM thermal sensor in there. We have a GPU sensor, we have a CPU sensor. So I know what temperature everything is. If you're worried about the, the MOSFETs, don't be. The solution to the MOSFETs is to put a fan like here that just blasts air through it and it'll be better than the solution they had anyway and uh, of course this is far more portable than theirs so we previously talked about how the hades canyon knock is so cool because it's small and you can put it in like your carry-on bag plug it into the hotel tv and have a super powerful mobile editing station in addition to whatever laptop you bring with you which is something we've been considering for computex for example uh, now this version of it I think is far more likely to get through airport security, actually. I'm pretty sure uh, if, if they asked questions about this, you could just say that it was a jury-rigged device to... Jury-rigged thermal device It's probably what I would go with. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm proud of it, but we'll see if it works. Fortunately, that insane amount of thermal paste I put on there did turn out to be a good idea because the cold plate moved around a lot during installation. So I'm, I'm just hoping there was enough there that as it kind of wiggled around, any thermal paste that came off the sides was just access anyway. Uh, so the next step is to thermally test this. I'm going to plug this into an external power source. Believe it or not, the Intel NUC board does not come equipped for this particular task. And then we'll plug in the SSD as I showed. I don't know what other things I need. Like what else do we, we don't need this. This is the blower fans. We don't need those cables. So what other cables did I unplug? I unplugged the LED cable for the Intel fancy Skull Canyon logo thing, Skull Trail logo thing. And this is LEDs. This is an LED board. We don't need that. Plus a power button switch. So I'm gonna have to find the power button on here. I'm assuming it's a physical button, and if not, then I'm just gonna jump it. Is that it right there? That might be it. So I think I've got the power button. So, worst case, I just jump it. But that's that's what we're gonna do. So do thermal test on this, check back, make sure you subscribe to catch the thermal testing on this thing. It should still work. There's really no reason it wouldn't work presently. Uh, we didn't apply enough force to uh, bend the PCB that much. It's a little bent. It'll be okay. Check back. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a mod mat like the one I was working on for this episode. And then also go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly and get exclusive access to the bonus Ask GN episodes that we do for Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.